What's up y'all, welcome back to Fish the Moment. So right now, most of the bass in the country are either spawning or just getting ready to spawn. And so today, I want to make a video about my top three sneaky spawning areas where you can find fish spawning that other guys aren't fishing and put a lot more fish in the boat this spring. So let's get into it. But before we get into this video, I do want to remind you guys that I made a complete guide to fishing in the spawn last year. And in this video, I explain when the bass spawn, the best areas to look for spawning bass, and the types of cover and structure that these bass will spawn around. And it's a really good introduction to fishing during the spawn. So check that video out using the link either in the description or up here in the top right corner. And it'll make the rest of this video a lot easier to understand. Number one. Isolated cover off the bank. So the first sneaky area that I look for bass during the spawn that a lot of guys don't fish is isolated cover that's underwater and off of the shore. So to give you an example of what I'm talking about, let's use a pocket on Lake Maumelle in Arkansas. And if we zoom into one of the flatter, shallow pockets on the dirty end of Lake Maumelle, you'll notice that when the water is drawn down, you'll see some isolated stumps they're off the bank on this flat. And this Google Earth image was taken when the lake was three to four feet below normal pool. And so normally the lake is three or four feet higher and these stumps are underwater. And if we look at this pocket, you notice that there's a really nice creek channel or a ditch that feeds the back of this pocket. And there's flats on both sides of this ditch. And you'll also notice that there are stumps all over this pocket both on the edge of this ditch or this creek and up on top of the shallower flat. And again, the water is normally three to four feet higher in this area. So the stumps on the edge of that ditch may be in four feet of water and the stumps on top of the flat may be in two feet of water, which are perfect places for the bass to either sit in the pre-spawn, the spawn or the post-spawn. And so what will happen in these areas is that the bass will move from the main lake and follow this creek back into this pocket. And right before they move up to spawn and they get in their pre-spawn patterns, they'll set up on the edges of these ditches on these stumps that are in four to five feet of water and stage before they move up to spawn when the water temperature is between 50 and 57 degrees. And then as the water temperatures warm up into the high 50s and low 60s, the female bass and the male bass will both move up onto these flats to make their beds. And most people would think that the bass would move up onto the bank and they would just fish the shoreline looking for bass in two to three feet of water within the cast of the bank. But like I mentioned earlier, the flats in the back of this pocket are only two to three feet deep. And so the bass will spawn out on these flats and they'll normally spawn around any type of hard bottom or hard cover they can find like these stumps. And so a lot of times I'll actually fish two to three cast lengths away from the bank or maybe 50 or 60 yards away from the shoreline and try to target these isolated stumps on these shallow flats because most guys will literally drive their boat right over the top of these areas and never fish them in the spawn because they want to fish the bank. But I can pull off onto the edge of these ditches in the pre-spawn and fish a crankbait and a jig around those stumps or push up onto the flats in two to three feet of water and throw a senko or even a spinner bait and flipping a creature bait on those stumps and catch those bedding bass that are off the bank but still in shallow water and that receive very little to no fishing pressure from other anglers. And these fish won't just set up on stumps, they'll also set up on rocks or laydowns or even patches of grass out in the middle of these flats. So don't worry if your lake doesn't have stumps in the back of its shallow pockets. You can find them on lily pad stems and all kinds of different types of hard cover or hard bottom. So experiment with the types of cover you're fishing because these bass will spawn around a lot of different stuff. Number two. Super shallow backwater areas. The next type of sneaky areas I like to fish for spawning bass are super shallow backwater areas on rivers and lakes that other guys are either scared to put their boat into or may not even know have enough water in the back of them to actually float their boat. So to explain what I'm talking about, 
Let me give you an example of a spot on the Arkansas River that I like to fish during the spawn. And if you look at this area, you'll notice that there is a really big island, and there's some small pockets and cuts that go into this island. And if we zoom in, you'll notice that this area back here has a little bit clearer water. And you'll notice that it's clearer because the water on this Google Earth image looks a little bit darker than the water on the outside of this pocket right here that has a lot lighter color and looks a lot more dingy and muddy. And the area they like to fish is actually this really skinny, narrow cut in the back of this pocket. And you may be thinking to yourself, man, that looks super shallow. It may have less than a foot of water back in there, and it's so far back in this island. But this area here actually is two to three feet deep, and there's a little bit of a drop off at the mouth of this cut. And I actually found this area by idling back into this backwater when the river was a little bit high and I was just making sure there weren't any stumps in this area and normally when the river is at normal pool you can't actually float your boat back into this pocket the only way you can get in there is running in on plane at 40 to 60 miles an hour to make sure that your boat lifts out of the water and can get a little bit shallower than it would if you're idling your boat back in there at 3 to 4 miles an hour and while these areas are pretty difficult to find and they're pretty sketchy to get into when you have to make sure that you don't wreck your boat trying to run on plane in one of these areas, it can definitely be worth looking for these areas because sometimes these areas will hold concentrations of fish year round and the bass will actually live back in these areas. And if you look at this spot, again, there's two to three feet of water back in here. There's actually some good vegetation and there's clearer water, which will hold bait fish, it'll hold bass, the bass can spawn here and they can summer there. And so these areas, again, are hard to find, but they're a lot of times less pressured than a lot of the other areas on your river system or your lake. And when I'm fishing these shallow backwater areas, it's pretty easy to actually get bites. All you have to really do is fish baits that will stay a little bit higher in the water column, like a fluke or a senko or a spinner bait, because a lot of times these areas will have a little bit more silty, muddy bottom. And you also want to look for laydowns or any type of hard cover like stumps things like that back in these areas and because these fish aren't as pressured a lot of times all you have to do is put a bait within the general vicinity of a bass and they'll come up and just crush it and it's some of the most fun fishing that you can get on on river systems and shallow or muddy water lakes so before we move on i want to give you a few more examples of these types of areas this time on a lake rather than a river system so here we have kerr reservoir in oklahoma and if you look at this area, it looks very similar to the area I showed you on the Arkansas River. And it's basically a big island or a series of islands on the upper end of Kerr Reservoir. And I really like looking for these shallow backwater sloughs on areas of the lake where you have these big islands because normally you can at least find one little creek that has a small depression back in one of these islands. And also these pockets are gonna be really well protected from the wind and will stay a little bit clearer because they'll stay out of the current and the muddy water that pushes through the shallow or dirty water lakes, which will warm up the water faster. They'll also hold a lot of good fish. And so if you're trying to figure out where to start looking for these areas, look for big groups of islands on your lakes and you'll always normally be able to find at least one good area like the ones I'm talking about. So if we zoom into this area, you'll notice that there is another small, narrow, deep water pocket back in this island, just like the area I showed you earlier. And if you look at this area, you'll notice that the water is really low and you can actually see some exposed sandbars. And it's basically really hard to run into this area unless you run in on plane and skate by the sandbar right here. But sometimes the water on these lakes is higher. And so if we find a new image, you'll see that the sandbar actually is underwater most of the time. But you still can't actually idle a boat through this section just because it's so shallow and that sandbar's there. So the only way we can get back into this deeper pocket is by running on pad over this part of the sandbar. Number three. Flat secondary points in six to 10 feet of water. The last sneaky spawning area I'm gonna talk about are flat secondary points where bass will spawn in six to 10 feet of water just out of visible range from fishermen. 
Now, this is one of my favorite approaches for catching spawning bass and works really well on lakes that have really clear water. Let's say five to 10 feet of visibility. And it's even better if your lake has smallmouth bass in it, like Bull Shoals Reservoir or Dale Hollow or Ten Killer Lake, all lakes that are very deep, very clear, and have big smallmouth in them. So to explain what I'm talking about, let me show you an area on Bull Shoals Lake where you can find really good smallmouth bass spawning in five to 10 feet of water off the bank in the springtime. So when you first look at this area, you may think it looks very similar to a lot of pockets or creeks you may see on your home lake. And the areas I'm going to be focusing on are these three points right here, which again, don't look that special on first glance. But as we zoom into this creek, you'll notice that all of these points are very flat and have six to eight feet of water extending all the way out to about a cast to a cast and a half away from the bank. And unlike bass on dirty water lakes, on these very clear reservoirs with 5 to 10 feet of visibility, bass will spawn down in 6 to 12 feet of water because light will penetrate all the way down to the bottom when the water is super clear, even in 12 feet of water. And so a lot of times, fishing pressure will cause these fish to push off the banks and actually spawn deeper off these secondary points that are a little bit flatter than the other points in the pocket. And on these secondary points in particular, the bass will spawn in these areas where you see that six to eight feet of water that's again a cast to a cast and a half off the bank. And these fish are a lot less pressured than the fish up on the bank. And again, most guys will just beat the bank, fish down the shoreline, and try to target the bass that are within a cast of the bank. But if you back your boat off the bank a little bit and throw a shaky head or a drop shot or other bottom bouncing baits in that six to eight feet of water, you'll find that you'll catch a lot of good spawning bass in these areas. And a lot of times you can't see these bass because the water is a little bit too deep and the glare on the surface will just cause you to have difficulty actually seeing down in the water. And some guys actually use these big orange cone contraptions on some northern lakes to actually cut the glare off the water and see spawning smallmouth down in 10 to 15 feet of water. And I actually haven't used one of these things, but they look kind of funny and they do work apparently really well. But if you're fishing without a partner, it may be kind of hard to use one of them. So I just kind of blind cast around these points and also throw things like Carolina rigs as well. But again, anything that's on the bottom and just drag that bait down there slow and pretend like you're sight fishing. But instead of actually visibly seeing those bass, you're working that bait off the bank in again, six to 12 feet of water. And as I mentioned earlier, if your reservoir has smallmouth in it, this can be a really good pattern for catching spawning smallmouth, especially when the smallmouth first move up to spawn. And a lot of times smallmouth will spawn in a little bit colder water temperatures than the largemouth. They'll spawn in maybe 57 to 59 degree water. And sometimes when those smallmouth first move up, they'll pull up on these type areas and you can catch some really good ones in the early spawn. And here's one similar area they like to fish on Lake DeGray in Arkansas. And again, it's basically just a flat secondary point. And you'll notice it looks very similar to the points I showed on Bull Shoals. And really, again, I'll just fish around these points with a drop shot, a shaky head, or a Carolina rig. And they definitely work really well during the spawn. And they're areas that a lot of guys are going to ignore or not even know that they're spawning bass there. And you'll know that these points are flatter because you notice that the contour lines are pretty much non-existent or very spread apart right off the tips of these points. And if you want to learn more about how to understand contour line maps, I have a video on my channel which is a complete guide to contour line maps. And it'll explain how to read these maps and how to find some of the basic structures you need to know to catch more bass this year. So definitely check out that video. So I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something about fishing in the spring. 
And if you did enjoy the video, I really would appreciate if you would share this video out with a friend. It's one of the best ways to spread this information to make everyone a better bass fisherman. And if you do want to hold on to this information for yourself and not share it with your friends, please leave a comment down below and like the video. It still helps me out, even though sharing may help me out just a little bit more. But I know you guys may want to keep this information to yourself, so I can definitely respect that. But definitely check out my other social media pages and my website if you want to book a fishing lesson or buy a personal map breakdown and I can look at your lake and pick out some of these sneaky spawning areas for you and hopefully help you put more fish in your boat this spring and all the rest of the year. So again, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.